Her day job is being an engineer. She's got a master's. She is smart. But her night job is t practicing the emotional freedom technique and leading cuddle parties and running the intimacy dojo, which is her real passion. So she is terrified, but she's finally doing it. Please welcome to the stage, Kathy Bartuli. <laughs> beautiful bouncy brunette in black lingerie and thigh-high stockings is holding onto my bare breasts while her two friends spank her. I'm leaning up against a wall in this huge room with 50-some people having great sex. And I have to look back and wonder, how did I get here? <laughs> you see, two and a half years before that, I'd been sitting alone in my, in my couch in my house in Dallas watching SVU, Special Victims Unit. And uh, they had a character on there. Someone had died. This woman had died alone in her apartment, and there was no one to call. And I realized I hadn't been in a, on a date in 12 years. That could be me. And I didn't want that to happen. But I had a lot of reasons why that, you know, just to keep on that path. I was too fat. I weighed 320 pounds. I looked like this. I thought nobody would want to date me. I was too old. I was 43, you know, past the prime, just waited out a few more years and coast to the grave, and you never have to deal with any of this stuff. And I was too wounded. The original reason I took time off from dating was because, well, I wanted to heal from the sexual abuse that I'd experienced as a child, and I needed time away from everything. And I'd done a lot of emotional processing, and I'd cleared so much out of my life. But as I got past the emotional trauma, I started connecting with my body again. And instead of numbness, I realized that my body hurt all the time. My vagina hurt all the time. And I was afraid to get in a relationship, because if I got close to them and I wanted to be sexual, there would be so much shame if I told them, and I didn't want to pretend anymore. I didn't want to pretend that something didn't hurt when it did. So I didn't want to get in a relationship. But I also didn't want to wake up at the end of my life and realize that my life had just passed me by. So in that moment, I realized I had to do something. And that fairy godmother I'd been wishing for with the magic wand that would make me very slender and dateable, she hadn't shown up. And the person, Mr. or Ms. Wright, that was going to parachute through my living room ceiling hadn't come by. And it was really up to me. I had to make a difference. And I was really scared because I didn't know what to do or how to do it. Conventional therapy hadn't worked for me. Not about that. So I decided to use the one resource I was really confident in. I'm a PhD engineer, research scientist. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. And I have 19 patents. I figured if I can figure that stuff out, <laughs> I can probably figure this out. So I, I was, was going to figure this out. And I called my doctor, and he referred me to a specialist. And I went, and I showed up in Dr. Lieberman's office, and he's there with his white jacket and his gray distinguished hair. And he said, don't worry, we see this all the time. You know that clinical kindness they use a lot? Um, Women have this problem sometimes. It's called vaginismus. And what's happening, either because of stress or trauma, the muscles in the vagina are in constant spasm. It's kind of like having a Charlie horse in your vagina all the time. And it hurts. And I would cry even during a GYN ex uh, exam. It would just hurt so much. And he said, we have treatments for it now. We're, you're going to be fine. The treatment is called electrostimulation. It's $1,200 for six sessions. Um, sometimes you have to repeat it once or twice more, and if those don't work for some reason, don't worry, we have surgical options we can explore, but for now, let's go with the electrostimulation. I was like, okay. Um, and I showed up the next week for the appointment, and the nurse, nurse practitioner came in, again, with her little lab coat and the curly blonde hair, 
And she had me put my legs up on the stirrups and, and she kind of explained what she was doing as she was doing it. So she said, well, we're first gonna put in this anal probe. <laughs> okay. She said, that's to tell if the muscles are contracting or not. Like, All right, they feel contracted. <laughs> and then she took out this larger probe and she said, this is for your vagina and she pushed it in. Now mind you, I'm there because penetration really hurts. And I'm not relaxed and I'm not feeling comfortable, so it was very painful. And she said, now I'm gonna turn it on. It's this AC current we're gonna send through your muscles and it's gonna cause them to contract over and over again until they relax, they just give up. It's like, all right. <laughs> and they turned it on and it burned. And it was 20 minutes of me laying there trying to breathe and sweating and just praying it was over. And we were done, she's like, I'll see you next week. <laughs> okay. And throughout the week, it felt like the muscles were not at all relaxed, they were actually quite angry. Um, and I showed up the next time and I went through the procedure, and at the end I said, you know, I don't think this is working, I feel more ashamed and more in pain than I've ever felt in my life, this isn't working. And she said, don't worry, hold on a minute, I'll be right back. I'm like, okay. And she was gone a couple minutes and she came back with two pieces of paper. And she handed me the first one and she said, this is a pre prescription for lidocaine cream. You can rub it on your vagina and then it won't hurt anymore. Okay. Um, she handed me the second one. And this is a prescription for Valium. And you can take this and you won't feel so stressed or shamed. And I thanked her and I walked out to my car and I just sat there. I was kind of late for work and I just sat there and I said, this is not what I signed up for. This, I don't want to numb my body out so I can have sex. I don't want to bludgeon my vagina so that it gives up and can endure penetration. This is not what I signed up for. And I drove away and I didn't go back. But I didn't want to give up, so I went back to the internet and I started looking, I was reading everything from clinical papers to blogs people had. And I kept seeing that people had found Tantra was very helpful to, to heal sexual shame and, and trauma. So I started looking around, and Dallas is not exactly the sexually healing mecca of the US. <laughs> and it, at that time, the police were actively prosecuting people that advertised anything like that. They would actually go out after them. So it was really hard to find anything. And I didn't know people to ask. So um, I did finally find a website, and um, I was very excited. They said they do sexual healing. And I called and Sarah answered the phone and she said, oh, no problem, we do this work all the time, it's gonna be great. Um, I have an appointment open tomorrow night, would you like to come at nine o'clock? I'm like, yes. And she said, as I was getting off the phone, oh, my husband Bill does this work too, can we include him in this? He, we've done really good work together before. And I said, if it will help, I'm willing to do anything. So I drove through the rain at nine o'clock at night, 25 miles and showed up for the appointment. And they did a really beautiful job. They told me what was gonna happen, they took my $300 for the three hour session. And um, we did a great session where I was actually able to feel some pleasure and start to relax and let go of fear. But when it was over, he turned to me, and Bill turned to me and he said, I've been wanting to do work on my wife Sarah, you have some pretty good energy, would you help me? Well, I have crappy boundaries back then, really bad. And I felt really like I owed them something. So I said, okay. Um, and for two hours we did this healing session on her under his direction. And I was really overwhelmed. It had been a really intense session anyway and I just wanted to go home. And when she was done, he turned to me and said, now it's my turn. I was like, no. No, I just wanna go home. And he said, no, that we wanna be, there was something about balance and they argued with me for about 30 minutes blocking the door. They were standing in front of the door and wouldn't let me leave. And finally, I just got whatever courage I had and shoved past them and ran to my car and drove away. <laughs> and I was really scared because I thought this was, you know, I had a lot of hope this was something that would work. And I didn't know where else to find stuff in Dallas, but I went back to the internet and I was still looking around. And after about two months of listening to me complain bitterly, my best friend sent me an article that this coach, Reed, had written. 
And he said, I think this guy could help you. Why don't you call him? And I did. And during our first Skype session, I explained everything that was going on. He's like, hmm, okay. I think the first thing you need to do is start getting out and date. And I'm like, Reed, you don't understand. I need to heal so I can date. I need to lose weight so people will date me. And he's like, no, you're perfect for dating right now. I said, no one will go out with me. And he said, your biggest fear sounds like you think that you're too big for anyone to date you. I said, yes. He said, that's what you put at the top of your dating profile. And I, was, I thought he was crazy. I did tell him that. Um, <laughs> and he said, you know, you're scared of dating anyway. If you put that at the pro top of the profile and no one asks you to go out, you don't have to deal with it. It was, like, it was good logic. I couldn't <laughs> argue. <laughs> so I did. I put, it, I put my profile out. And two weeks later, I was out on my first date. And... <laughs> At that point, it was 14 years since I'd been on one. Um, and I had more dates than I could fit in my schedule, and it was really fun. And Reed introduced me to a lot of different resources where I could learn, including body, where I could see people having pleasure and enjoying their bodies. It was so good for me. Well, a year and a half later, I was at Polypalooza, which is 100 <laughs> 110 people in desert hot springs, mostly naked, often having sex. Um, and the second night, there was a play party, and I went. And I kind of felt like a toddler led into the adult party. <laughs> I was just going to go and watch and try not to make a fool of myself and just enjoy people enjoying their bodies. And as I was walking across the room, this bubbly brunette, Sherry, who I'd talked to earlier, said, hey, I'm about to be spanked. Would you like to watch? <laughs> I was like, OK. <laughs> And so I leaned up against the wall, and her friends were spanking her. And she's there in the thigh-high stockings, wiggling her hips, having a great time. And after a little bit, she's like, would you take off your shirt so I can lean on your breasts while I'm spanked? I was like, OK. <laughs> and since I'm one of those people that can orgasm when my nipples are stimulated right, I was having a really good time. <laughs> And then after a little while, her friend's hands got tired. And they're like, do you want to learn how to spank her? All right, let's try that. And I never even wanted to spank anyone, but she was having such a good time. So they were you know, showing me techniques and letting me spank her. And about the time my hand got tired, we ended up in a pile on the floor with my face and Sherry's crotch. She was giving someone a blowjob and alternating making out with the other person. I'm having a really good time. This is really fun. I was the one that was too fat, too old, and too wounded to play or even go on a date. And this handsome um, man with shaved head who I'd made out with the night before came over and squatted down near me and said, can I help? Yes. <laughs> and he sat on my butt, and he put his fingers in me. And as I came into Sherry's pussy, I realized something. I realized that nothing hurt. moment, I realized that I'd become my own superhero. I had rescued myself from that couch and those fears. And I want each of you to know that you're a superhero. You're here. And every time you defeat a fear or step outside your comfort zone, you destroy someone's kryptonite. We all have kryptonite. It can be we're too fat, or we're too old, or we're too hairy, or we're too awkward, or maybe we're just too wounded. We all have it. And every time you 
share, role model, that you can be self-expressed or enjoy sex for pleasure and fun. You give someone out there who's stuck on the couch a pathway to go out and date, or maybe be in the middle of a puppy pile at a great sex party. Thank you. Give it up again for Kathy Bartuli. <laughs>